President Lutard, His Excellency the Swiss Ambassador, the Swiss delegation, both the official delegation and the business delegation, and students. Ma'am, it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Uh, we were remembering that uh, Ms. Lutard had come to Terry in 2012, five years ago, and it's a pleasure to welcome her here when she is the president of the Swiss Confederation. And at the same time, the state councillor, the minister for energy, environment, communications, I must say I tried to remember all the things that you were responsible for and at some point gave up. But suffice it to say that the most important issues which lead a country ahead are part of her portfolio. So welcome. It's a pleasure also for us to have with us here students from various universities in this city, those who represent both the smartest people today, you know, it's difficult to admit that, but they are, <laughs> as well as the people who will take us into tomorrow. The president has had a busy schedule. She has had official meetings, but I think this must be the first time while you're in India when you're meeting with relatively younger colleagues. <laughs> and uh, when we were told that she would like to discuss the Swiss energy, the new Swiss energy strategy, we thought this was a great idea. Because these students are the people who will carry India and the world into tomorrow when we have energy challenges which are mixed with global challenges, when we look at, on the one hand, dwindling resources, and on the other hand, an atmosphere which is full of carbon dioxide and other gases that we would rather live without. I know that it was quite a challenge for you to get the, Swiss, the new switch strategy through the Swiss parliament, and we look forward to you to tell us about the new Swiss strategy. Madam President. Well, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here with you because I think uh, it's very, very important that we get in contact with you as students with our future. And you have a big responsibility and you have also big opportunities because what you learn and what you will introduce after your studies when you are in business, when you remain in science, science will be quite decisive for the world of tomorrow. So that's why I'm convinced when you go on the right path, you will also lead this planet in the right direction. I have the pleasure that in my delegation we have also with Professor Springman, a very famous professor in Switzerland from ETH Zurich, which I'm sure you know is one of the world well-known universities, high-tech, and even uh, here I think they have now some cooperation. We, uh, we uh, signed yesterday an MOU between ETH Zurich and Konkan Railways, because wherever you are, may it be in mobility, May it be in industry, may it be in the households, energy is part of the game. Switzerland and India, are, you know, we enjoy long standing, uh, constructive, and very intense uh, uh, relations. Over 70 years, we have now a friendship agreement. And uh, that's why I'm also here with uh, a business delegation that we can also celebrate and now launch uh, a lot of activities. Uh, uh, to celebrate these 70 years of friendship. This friendship is continually evolving to keep pace with the challenges the whole world is facing, namely climate change and the growing need for resources, especially also for energy. Swiss-Indian collaboration in the field of clean technology and energy has therefore a great potential and I'm very happy that we have already many projects uh, together which are operational. The time is right 
for more strategic collaboration on clean technology and on energy. Earlier this year, as the chairman already pointed out, the, the Swiss population approved a new energy policy. And you know, we also signed uh, uh, the Paris Agreement. Uh, every nation now is in a ratification process, so uh, it's really the right time now to uh, consider what are the appropriate na national measures and how fast we can really also decarbonize uh, the planet. This might be for every country different. Switzerland starts uh, from uh, a point where we already have low emissions, but we are heavily dependent on energy imports, especially on fossil energy, because well, our transportation needs a lot of energy, same in India. So one element uh, of our analysis was how can we reduce our dependency on imports, also the price uh, <laughs> level, because whenever uh, Russia has an issue with Ukraine or you have uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia a uh, geopolitical issue, well, the price level, uh, we feel it also in our prices at home. So actually we thought it's quite wise to make a change and to be less dependent and because we also have to reduce fossil energy, it's the right time to do it. Energy efficiency, that's really the main pillar of our strategy. In every household, all over the world, energy efficiency must be key. Although when your consumption is at the low level, you can reduce it. India, with your growth rates, you are on a phase that your consumption goes up remarkably. Normal. We are on a very high level. Uh, so uh, consuming more energy means also you pay a lot of money for that. And because energy as a resource uh, is not uh, uh, available all the time, in the future we also have to be efficient because these resource, perhaps some resources, may run out. So we have also a responsibility for next generations. Energy efficiency means also a lot of opportunities when you can develop new technologies to maintain a certain quality of life, but at the same time being more efficient or so reduce your consumption. And the third element for Switzerland, this might be different in, in India, we began in the 60s to phase out coal. So in our energy mix today, actually we don't have coal anymore. But we replaced coal in the 60s with nuclear power plants. This was at that time the right decision for Switzerland and it helped us for many years now to produce uh, power at a very low cost and also in winter times when we have no sun uh, or limited sun in Switzerland uh, to help us to have a base production for the industry. Well, you know, nuclear means also some risks means also you have to look for storage solution and this means a uh, thousand of years of storage and you know also in a densely populated like Switzerland the risk uh, is not uh, very attractive. We, after Fukushima we also realized that the cost for safety measures in existing nuclear plants go up heavily so uh, that's why we decided we don't uh, uh, want to have new nuclear power plants, but those existing, they shall be in function as long as it's safe for our population and as long as the companies uh, who produce your nuclear power think it's also economically uh, uh, feasible for them. So these three pillars were the analysis and the main decisions in our new strategies. What persuaded us to initiate these changes? And how did we manage to convince Swiss voters in a popular vote? I think the reorientation came about due to the changing circumstances. Following the nuclear disaster at Fukushima, demands in terms of nuclear safety has risen sharply, as I mentioned, and also the population was aware of that. Even the industry followed after a couple of years our advice that uh, probably this will uh, be more and more cost intensive. 
the cost of building no nuclear plants uh, for the moment uh, has risen so sharply that also the Swiss industry is, uh, uh, in our view, uh, has gone the right way and does not invest anymore. And you see these developments, I think, all over Europe. It is almost impossible to build new nuclear power stations under market conditions. Means, you see it in the UK, they decided that they have to subsidize heavily, heavily for more than 30 years that you get uh, a stable price. It's not a market price, by the way, even with the subsidies. So this became clear and uh, this supported the decision of the Swiss government that uh, we will not build new nuclear power plants. We did not say, did, did the same thing like Germany to fix a deadline for nuclear plants because I think uh, it's not very wise to uh, waste investment costs and to waste money when their nuclear power plants are safe and function. So that's why we did not have a fixed data that they get out of function. So it's really the safety which is the decisive element. We have another factor that uh, was uh, important for the reorientation of Switzerland's energy policy. And this was the structural changes of recent years which resulted in a major drop in prices, due in part to weak demand in Europe since 2008, since the financial and economic crisis. We had some countries with recession, so uh, they had a very weak demand and prices came down. Part of it was also that in, in the US you had a, uh, new resources like shale gas, shale oil, so new uh, with the fracking new technologies and the coal went to Europe and the prices went down uh, for coal. We have cheap oil at that time, uh, still uh, I think, because uh, well we have uh, many countries who uh, have their fortune for oil, so for the moment they have an interest to put it on the market. And on the other side, especially uh, in Europe, but also worldwide, we have no CO2 pricing system. We have some countries with a CO2 tax, but uh, if you emit a lot of CO2 price, actually nothing happens. We have not a price system which could be also an influence for investors to reduce CO2. The instruments we know from the Kyoto Protocols are not really working very much. So there's not a market mechanism which could also drive uh, investors to a more decarbonized economy. I think another element was very important in these last years, that we have new technologies which change the energy markets all over the world. It has become much more easier and much more uh, at lower cost that you can produce electricity yourself on every rooftop. Uh, in the industry, you can have your own generators. You are, you, are, you are not depending on an operator which is far away. The trend in Europe with solar panels shifting from large-scale power plants to smaller decentralized facilities was, uh, uh, I think, something which helped us that uh, prices came down and that everybody thought, well, this could be a good idea also for me personally or for farmers as well as for the industry. And at the same time, we have digitalization, smart buildings, smart mobility, smart uh, equipment. So we, we, we learned also that IT has a role to play and can also help to reduce the consumption in all uh, fields of our economy and even in all fields of our life. So on top of that, now we have this Paris Climate Agreement that uh, uh, I think now 160 countries of the world ratified. Uh, so uh, I think for India as well, for Switzerland, this is also uh, a, a, a mandate we have to uh, make greater use of renewable energies instead of fossil fuels and that we can shift in the economy from, uh, towards a more decarbonized world. 
this together, all this reorientation, I think, is for every country now the challenge, but I think also a big opportunity. The energy policy offers for Switzerland, therefore, uh, uh, a lot of opportunities. I, on the one hand, we can reduce our consumption, we can reduce our dependency on foreign fuel imports, and on the other side, with the efficiency pillar, we can invest in research, we can invest uh, in new technologies, and uh, because the market is a worldwide market, this can help our industry that in every country we can introduce efficiency measures, products, services, whatever we want. India's new energy policy, currently in preparation, also puts emphasis on energy efficiency and the use of renewable energy. So we are pretty much in line with another starting point, but uh, I think what uh, the challenges are is, is the same. So we think to shape our collaboration is uh, at the very right moment, and you, you can do that. You uh, get the mandate from us politicians to help us to find solutions, because politicians can give you a, a nice framework, the right incentives, enough money for research, to get a very smart education, but afterwards it's you who have to help us with, uh, uh, with, with your projects, with your new uh, inventions, with innovation. And that's why we in Switzerland uh, had also a program that our universities, also universities of applied science, got more money from the government, approved by the parliament, that we have seven competence centers who help us now to make the move towards a decarbonized and a, a more climate-friendly world. These seven competence centers, they are uh, not seven universities because we urged the best ones working together. Working together also with the industry. Because when you uh, only work for patents or for nice papers, that's, this might be good for the university, but we want to see results, results which can afterwards implement it in the industry, in the households, uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a large scale. So that's why this collaboration between experts from different uh, uh, faculties uh, and integration of the industry is for us very important. And we got already results. And uh, you know, uh, I think the biggest result probably would be when we find solutions for uh, storage of power. In Switzerland, and here you face a similar uh, issue. Well, in, in summer times, we have enough sun, we have wind, we have uh, 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 the hydropower. Uh, but in winter times, we need, we need a lot of power because we have to heat our houses, the industry must run. Uh, so how can we store the power from summer to winter? It might be only three months that we have to survive, but three months are quite decisive. And three months means either we import when there is uh, enough power in Europe, or we find solutions for storage. And I think that's the big field where a lot of universities now have the, the best brains uh, to work, and that's perhaps also a chance for India. We, Different approaches might, might be good. Well, we talk of batteries, but uh, there might also be other solutions for storing power uh, for some months. And I think here, whenever companies, universities have solutions, you will have a huge market. So that's a big possibility for startups, a big possibility for the industry. And here I think uh, this is really very important. To reduce fossil fuel and uh, reduce our CO2 emissions might be for India, for the moment, not the biggest challenge. But in Switzerland, we have melting glaciers. We have uh, the average of 3.5 uh, Celsius increase of temperature. Worldwide, it's half of that. 
And we know in India, well, you, you have all, all, also uh, more and more floodings. You have also melting glaciers in the Himalaya sector. You have uh, dry uh, uh, regions where water is already scarce. So not everything, everything might be due to climate change, but a lot of these things. And therefore, we know also when not, we now don't invest in mitigation and adaptation, it's not for the health of the next generation. And therefore, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, fossil fuels is key for every country. Climate change is a slow process. And normally, you just talk about that when you have a disaster, like now in Mumbai. Then uh, people feel sad because we have uh, also a lot of dead people or you have damages. And it's better to invest in prevention and it's better to invest uh, in new technologies to avoid or uh, try that the situation can be stabilized. So in our uh, Swiss policies, we try also here together with science to find adequate answers in prevention, in pursue climate protection policies, disaster risk reduction, and all of these measures together with science, we can also give here an answer towards the population. And also here, from China to the, all the islands uh, uh, in, 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 in South uh, Africa, in South China, everybody looks for these solutions, especially disaster risk protection. We know that here also sensors and other technology could, help, could also help to bring people uh, in safety and not wait until the hurricane, the tornado, the typhoon is here and brings a lot of negative impact to the regions which are concerned. The Paris Agreement not only found a path through the otherwise dense jungle of multilateral negotiations, it's also established clear goals for sensible global energy, environmental and economic policies. As a highly developed economy, Switzerland is fully aware also of our responsibilities from the past, where we emitted CO2 uh, because uh, it was not actually a concern. So we have all the responsibility for the past. That's why we also pay uh, money in the pots uh, to reduce uh, the negative effects. And India uh, 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 is not on the same level. You will be a huge emitter of CO2 if you don't change. So please don't repeat the same mistakes we made in the industrialized world. That's why we also like to raise awareness and count on you as young people that you, from the beginning, in your education and in your activities, you have the sensitivity of environment and of climate change. I think Prime Minister Modi, uh, in all his activities, was also a personality who knows about the bad impact and uh, from his, the beginning of his political career, he understood and also uh, enforced renewable energy, energy efficiency, and he wants to have a clean, greener India, and I think uh, that's also a big vision and a contribution to a cleaner planet. With our aims to be uh, frontrunners in shaping a greener future, India has also become an important partner for Switzerland in this field. Important steps are being taken. The ambitious goals set out in the new energy policy in Switzerland, in the future energy policy in India. Big infrastructure pro projects, mainly in uh, railway, which can also help in mobility to uh, stabilize the emissions. We signed yesterday, therefore, this railway MOU because for mass transportation this is much more energy efficient uh, than the individual uh, car driven uh, uh, mobility. We have therefore uh, also 
uh, activities which are linked with you in smart cities. You see also uh, in the exhibition here some project of Switzerland uh, which could support your activities uh, in smart cities. Switzerland is a pioneer in environmental innovation. But as we all know, there are major new challenges ahead. Thanks to our leading experts, world-class universities and research institutions, our country is fully geared to meet these challenges. EPF uh, Lausanne, together with ETH Zurich, has developed promising low-carbon cement, which has the potential to reduce up to 30% of CO2 emissions during cement production. And here in India, you are, after China, ranked number one as cement consumer. So when we could implement these technologies in the Indian market, it would be fantastic. And I think that's good ideas coming from universities, coming from students, uh, from research laboratories, which can really help us uh, without uh, uh, losing quality of life. We have universities uh, from Bern, Zurich, Geneva, and Fribourg, who collaborated with institutions in the Indian Himalayas to strengthen research on glaciology and climate science for sustainable mountain development. People are also living there in these areas. And when we don't invest and help them in a couple of decennies, it will be very difficult to live there. Permafrost and uh, 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 disasters will increase. We had last, year, last week in Switzerland such a case where uh, uh, due to permafrost, uh, rocks uh, uh, covered a whole valley and uh, we had eight people also deaf and this is uh, a good example. We could save the village because of sensors who uh, were placed and who averted the population, uh, it's getting dangerous. The close collaboration between research institutions, the private sector and policymakers is for us a big uh, step ahead and in Switzerland a philosophy that uh, can be also duplicated in India. In Switzerland, it's normally thanks to this close cooperation that we can develop many clean technologies, that we can support them also with government money because many, pro many, many projects are also risky projects and you don't know from the beginning if you have a success. So that's the role also of government to put some uh, money also in research uh, to look what happens and not be sure if the result is commercialable. One element I think is also important for India is the building sector because also the building sector is a big consumer of energy. Building where you live in but also building for the industry. And here, uh, that's uh, in the construction business, heavily depending on standards, heavily dependent on architects, engineers, how they build buildings. In Switzerland, we still have a lot of buildings from the 70s where the standards have not been focused on energy efficiency. We have uh, still a lot of uh, oil-heated uh, 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 buildings. So how we can change that? how we can introduce also standards, uh, not only for new buildings, but also for buildings who has to, fee, to be refurbished. All this shows that a potential is great. In Switzerland, our experts show a potential to reduce only in existing buildings up to 30% of energy. It's a big potential. And that's also good for the construction sector. It gives jobs when they can refurbish houses. And a lot of companies can sell new technology for the houses. And I think also here, here is probably not a heating system, but cooling systems, which uh, could be heavily reduced. Uh, and then also the energy consumption could be reduced. So here also a level playing field of cooperation and a lot where you could contribute. 
ladies and gentlemen, India has skilled people, especially in the <coughs> academia. So it's also your duty to join us in this field and to work together with the industry to get us these technologies, to bring them to the market at prices everybody can afford. Sometimes uh, at the beginning, prices may be higher, but we must also calculate the overall costs, costs during the lifetime of uh, 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 a furniture, during the lifetime of a fridge, and then the, uh, the, it, the calculation might be different. So I think here it's also up to us to explain to the consumer that sometimes Paying a little bit more at the beginning of an investment helps you then over 20 years to have a better overall price at the end of the day. We have only one planet. For the moment, with this uh, increase of temperature worldwide, we should have 2.8 planets. And this only under the condition that all measures and all uh, uh, objectives these 160 nations announced in Paris are realized. We all know paper goals, that's one hand, but to realize this is very ambitious. So we are, when it comes good, by 2030, 2035, at 2.8 planets. So we must very fast do more to come from these 2.8 planets to one planet. Mm -hmm. We have roughly 85 years. We have to change the minds of a lot of people. We have to change industrial processes, change policies and our behavior. We in Europe, in industrialized countries, probably more than you in India. It's our duty to do that. We can do that. Technologies are already here, and you will bring us new ideas. That's why I think Switzerland and India in this field, we have a big potential of cooperation on science, on, science, on, a, on the applied level, together also with the industry, and then I think our population will say thank you, thank you, your youngsters who will make the change of the world. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. What can I say? This is a marvelous exposition, both of the national challenges in an international context. I think it tells of the kinds of challenges that each country faces, but also of the resolutions that need to address their national needs as well as the global, uh, as well as the global challenges that we face. As you rightly said, in India, our greatest challenge is to make sure that everybody has adequate and affordable energy. The average amount of energy used in India is about 0.6 kilo, uh, tons of oil equivalent per person per year. And there's no country in the world which has been able to provide a good quality of life to its people. And I'm using a human development index of 0.9 as a surrogate for a good quality of life without at least four tons of oil equivalent worth of energy. But if all of this energy is supplied to people in India in the form of carbon energy, the world is boiled. And therefore the challenge becomes, how do we ensure that everybody has adequate and affordable energy, but it's not based on carbon? And as in Switzerland, we also have three pillars, and two are very similar. One of the pillars, like yours, is on energy efficiency. Each one of us can get the same amount of cooling, or the same amount of transport, or the same amount of cooking by using less energy. Also, as we look to the future, as we look to 2030, 
fully two-thirds of the buildings that will exist in that year, as you mentioned, have not even been built. And so if each building is built to be more energy efficient, and the Swiss India Building Energy Efficiency Project is a great move in this direction, then we are on the right track. Over the last few years, there is a number of uh, innovative challenges that India has taken in the area of energy efficiency, and I'd like to highlight only one, and that's on lighting. As we moved towards more energy efficient lighting, we realized we needed to move from incandescent bulbs and compact fluorescent lamps to LED bulbs, but they were more expensive. An LED bulb in 2013 or early 2014 costed 500 rupees, whereas an incandescent bulb costed 10 rupees. Even then, it paid itself in three years. But did I buy it? No. And if the 500 rupee LED bulb fails, that's a lot of money down the drain. So the innovative mechanism that we used was to create a company, Energy Efficiency Services Limited, which went to consumers and said, we will give you a bulb, pay us only 10 rupees a month, but keep giving us the money till we recover our costs. And if it fails, it will be replaced, no questions asked. And then they turned on the other side, they had all of these orders, and they did bulk procurement. And as they did bulk procurement, the price the first time around came out to be 310 rupees, when the market price was 500. In the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth procurement, the price had come down to 38 rupees. In other words, the size of the market, the competitive nature of procurement, and the comfort of the industry in knowing that it's a market that will keep growing helped bring in new technologies, new business models, so that now 260 million LED bulbs have been sold as of a few days ago. We use the same model in the second pillar. So the first is energy efficiency. The second is how on earth do we provide the energy that is needed in as low carbon a style as possible. How do we get electricity from the sun inexpensively? And again, the model was let's procure in large numbers and again and again and again. And the prices have tumbled. And they've tumbled to the point where a kilowatt hour of coal, of electricity from solar costs less today than a kilowatt hour of electricity from coal. The problem, of course, is we get it during the day. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, as people's incomes increase and they are able to afford air conditioning, we switch on our air conditioners at night when we are going to sleep. So this city, for example, these days, has a peak electricity demand at midnight when there's no sun. And that, again, highlights the point that you said, the importance of storage. We need to have batteries or other storage technologies, hydro, or even gas in the medium term, with, through which the, when we don't have the sun, but we have a demand, that demand can be met. The third pillar is ensuring that everybody has access to energy. And this is much more on cooking energy, where today biomass is used and used in a rather dirty manner that affects our health. And there, the, the need to provide clean cooking gas or induction cooking as we go ahead becomes important. These are all initiatives that are well on their way. They are initiatives that are making a difference in India and on the global uh, uh, climate. You very rightly said that we have to learn to pay more upfront so that we can get better world later, maybe, and even pay less later. If you're able to have an energy efficient LED bulb, it costs more in the beginning, but you pay less as we go along. As we move ahead, the challenge therefore becomes, how do we find the kind of money that is needed? Because if all the money is upfront, 
then things become more expensive than if you spend less money up front and more at the time when you're using it. So the cost of capital becomes a key challenge as we move ahead. So I'd like to leave us with the thought that the two challenges of the future for you are storage and how do we bring the cost of capital down. So whether you're a student of economics or of physics or of engineering or of almost any other discipline, we look forward to your contributions to make this world better. And I think the India-Swiss collaboration, the, India, the kinds of situation that we have in India and Switzerland, we have, well, there are differences, but there are a lot of similarities, both in the challenges and more importantly, in what we are doing to address those challenges. And together, I believe we can make the world a better place. Madam, thank you very much. And if it is okay with you, can we ask some of the students to ask you questions? I'm sure there'll be some questions. If I can have a show of hands, that'll help me manage the flow. Eeks. Okay, so you are here till midnight. Uh, what I'll do is, if it's okay with you, I'll take three questions at a yeah, time. Yeah. So let me start from this side. Yeah, and I would greatly appreciate if you could identify yourself, tell us your name and the university or college that you are from. Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam President, for sharing the details of the Swiss energy strategy. It was indeed interesting. Your name and the school you are with? I'm Harshita Saxena, and I'm currently studying in Delhi University. I'm doing bachelor's in business management. My question to you is, how does Switzerland plan on implementing the energy strategy, and how does it plan to further finance it? Okay. Let's take two more questions. Yes. Good if, evening, ma'am. If you can give this one right here. Yeah. Mm, yes. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your thoughtful words. Uh, my name is Varnam Shaharawat, and I'm from University of Delhi, Miranda House. I'm studying physics honors. My question to you is, India's energy vision is equally ambitious. We plan to increase the use of renewable energy to say 175 gigawatts by 2022. What is your impression about India's renewable energy target? Also, how can Switzerland help India in achieving this target through finance and technology? Okay, we'll take one more and then we'll turn to you. Uh, hello, I'm Mahalakshmi. I'm currently pursuing my final year in architecture from School of Planning and Architecture. Thank you, ma'am, for the inspiring talk. Uh, you actually um, uh, told us about Switzerland's leads in pioneering environmental innovations. So could you elaborate on new innovations in urban systems where the systems are not just consumers of electricity or energy, but they, could, uh, they can also be, you know, help in production of energy? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, would you like to take this now? Yes, these are a, a lot of questions. We could talk for an hour about that, but I try to be as sure, short as uh, possible. Uh, well, the implementation of our energy policy begins now. We have already an energy policy. Now it's a actually uh, strengthen measures which are already in place. One part, uh, the building program, is uh, since 2008 with our states uh, a common project because we decided we have a CO2 tax on, on heating oil. So part of this money we use for this building program. So uh, every citizen who says, okay, I uh, refurbish my house can have uh, a demand and a proposal and uh, when he's lucky and he fulfills the condition he gets money mm. not all, a contribution not all the money but it's a contribution an incentive actually that uh, he decides okay now I refurbish my house and it's, uh, it's more energy efficient we have a second part transportation because in Switzerland about 35% of our energy comes from traffic. Mm -hmm. And here we have a focus on new cars, new cars entering the market. So we have technical standards they have to fulfill. It's the same methodology in Europe. Uh, so that we focus on new cars because the old cars existing here, they are here. So, but we can influence 
what kind of cars will enter the market. So that's like your philosophy would like to have more e vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I think this goes in the same direction. And the third part is on, on, on how we can empower the renewables. Uh, and here we have for a limit, li limited years also feed in tariffs mm -hmm. and uh, payments uh, for the investor that the costs uh, uh, can be lowered. But after this period, it must be a market price. And uh, what you mentioned, the, the prices are coming really down to market level. So I think the conventional energies have to compete with the renewable. And I think this market is already very competitive and the renewables will get their position. So it's for us an incentive to give these developments a push, but afterwards it must be a market model. Uh, the question of architecture, also linked to buildings. We have a close cooperation with our, with our organizations of architects and engineers. So standards are developed together with these uh, business organizations. And uh, this is very important. Uh, so you, when you have standards in the construction of buildings and also in the refurbishments, and you don't get a construction permit when you don't fulfill these standards. Actually, it does not cost anything, but it's by standardization that we go in the right direction. Uh, we have a lot of uh, programs uh, together with cities to incentivize also. We have energy cities and energy region, and we label them. So when you, when you are in this program, mm. And when you get, fulfill the conditions, you got a label. And af after 10 years, you are, we, we check if you developed, if you reached your objective as an energy city, and then you get from uh, one standard up to a gold standard. So you get the gold medal when uh, you improve so fast. So it's also a program with uh, uh, objectives. We give them, we invite the cities, uh, but, we, but we leave up to the cities what might be adequate uh, if, it, if you do more on mobility, if you do more on, on, uh, on, on houses, if you do on la mm -hmm. uh, lightning, whatever, uh, you have a potential to reduce energy. And the same is for energy uh, uh, regions. Very uh, attractive and we have so far many, many, even more cities who are partnering in this programs and we do these programs also together with the industry because so it's a win-win situation yeah. for so everybody. this is great i mean uh, competition between cities i think we would love to live in a gold rated city wouldn't we uh, it will can we take okay we have to leave so yeah, yeah. i was going to ask if we could have three more questions okay, okay. i'll take Five them minutes. from this area yes oh yes oh yes uh, the question, it, uh, what, uh, my assessment about the Indian right. uh, goals, so very ambitious. But uh, listen, we also have in our uh, energy policy, uh, uh, we don't say any more goals because they, thought they, they told me in parliament, oh, goals, then you have to reach that. I think, well, for every, for you, mm -hmm. it's, for me, it's normal when you don't have goals. Okay, forget about that. You must have objectives and goals, and this must be ambitious. Otherwise, uh, well, not, nothing happens. So I think the, 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 the government is right to be very ambitious. And, well, even when you don't reach everything, it shows a clear direction, gives you an orientation. And Switzerland will be helpful. We have already here, uh, also in my delegation, our representatives from the solar industry. We have representatives who could waste, waste to energy could be an item. Uh, all these uh, uh, hydropower uh, uh, facilities. We have suppliers in all uh, this uh, 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 technology. For you, in the solar PV system, it will be difficult to compete with China, but mm. you can do it. But then you have to manufacture here. Yeah. And uh, uh, here also, I think we are willing to support you because it's a huge market. And I think uh, al already your interior market is 
good enough and it would, would be better making India. Here it, it, it really is worth to think about making India because it's a huge market and only to fulfill your market, I would recommend you manufacturing solar PV here in India would be a big business. Great, we look forward to that. Let's take three quick questions. administration from Institute of Hotel Management. So my question is that today in India and many developing countries around the world, people do not have access to clean sources of energy for cooking. So what role can Switzerland play in providing clean sources of energy to the people, especially in India? Okay, we'll take Thank you. Yes, those two and then we are done. A very good morning, ma'am. Ma my name is... Evening. Shri Sorry. A very good evening, ma'am. I'm pursuing the mechanical engineering from Manor Russia University. My question for the day is that we all know that India is equally participant when it comes to global temperature change crisis. As India is facing many natural calamities and disasters like flooding, drought, as you already mentioned. So what steps and the strategies are being taken by the Switzerland government with India when it comes to global temperature crisis? Okay, and then the last one. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Pavitra Paul. I'm pursuing uh, Bachelor in Science in Hospitality and Hotel Administration in Institute of Hotel Management. My question is that uh, climate change is a global concern in the world today. It is faced by different countries in different ways because of different capabilities. So uh, what are the key climate change impacts that are faced by Switzerland and how is it responding it domestically? What role is Switzerland playing uh, uh, in the, at the global level and what according to you? Should India be playing, uh, the role India should be playing? Well, I'm very sure it will take you. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I understood uh, everything uh, clearly. Perhaps uh, my first remark to disasters and uh, uh, all these uh, risks we face today. Uh, I think what is uh, uh, very important that you have a database. A database about any kind of, well, might, might be meteorolo meteorological data, all your rivers, uh, the sea level. Uh, so the, this must go in a ba database. And then you can also, with all these data, have a, a, a management of these mm -hmm. risks. We have such programs, for example, we helped Indonesia because they are very exposed to, uh, to, to typhoons, but also to tsunamis. And with all this database, then you can afterwards also, uh, 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 I think, educate people because only the database is for nothing. So you also have to interpret all these data. So I think here, when th there is a need in India, I'm sure we can be helpful. On the ground, we have also here programs in the, in the glaciers in the Himalaya because I think uh, uh, here also prevention and uh, uh, the, 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 the knowledge about the changes in glaciers uh, are very important. When it comes to the ocean, also there, mm -hmm. the temperature of the ocean, what's going on in the underground. So it's, in my view, a lot of knowledge, a lot of lo a database that you see also the trends and where it happens, and then you can also put your adequate measures. When we, in Switzerland, we have exposures. And then when we see, oh, this village, this city is exposed to a risk, then we have a program to finance with the village also adequate measures of prevention. And last week, we have been very, very happy that we prevented this village for massive uh, erosion of rocks. Uh, the investment paid already mm -hmm. off. Because afterwards, either perhaps you are lucky and have an insurance, but I think in India, most people have no insurance at all. So therefore, I think that's something we can improve. Um, your question was about, uh, I forgot the first question, was about... Cooking. Uh -huh. Yes, in cooking. Yes, uh, well, I think we have also in India with theory, uh, uh, biogas, 
biomass uh, converters. I think that's a good uh, uh, source, off-grid source, where you can, in rural areas, implement, and this is also a source for cooking. I think we have also uh, programs with solar power and uh, uh, also in India uh, that, you, uh, that families can use also to dry fruits because they have probably no fridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, so also here you can use the solar power for cooking. And I think also, well, uh, uh, this is uh, important that you uh, come away from, from coal and to burn the wood is not, is, is, uh, is not a solution. Huh? It, it, there might be solutions that also wood in general is, is neutral when it comes to CO2. But uh, uh, you should you, uh, keep the forests because you, are, you also have an obligation on biodiversity. Uh, and when you cut all the trees, you will have a, a lot of negative impacts on the environment in general. So I, I would not recommend uh, uh, to, to use wood in the future, but that's a long procedure that you can help the people in these areas where there's nothing else than, than wood. Uh, yes? I think so. So, on behalf of all of us, let's thank the President for her excellent remarks. <laughs>